Hey guys, welcome to Spitfire Crips. We're here at uh, the studio of Joe Trapanese. Uh, thank you for being here with me. Welcome. Well, let's show you around. This is my main room. This is where I have all my playback meetings with filmmakers, studio executives, producers. Uh, come on in. Cool. Um, so it's really important. Uh, I, I feel it's really important to have natural light. So we have a nice skylight in here, um, but I can control it, which is really nice. So when I'm trying to go for a theatrical experience, I could black out the room and have a more theatrical playback. Um, we're in 5.1 in this room. I'm testing out some new speakers, doing some demos, which is why there are way too many speakers up here. Cool. What um, speakers are you using at some minutes? Uh, so I've been using Atom speakers for a okay. very long time. Um, and this is actually my second surround set. I have another set at my house and uh, the one at my house is getting a little old, so I need, uh, I need to replace them. And I'm checking out these JBLs. These are just a, pair, a demo pair of the new 7 Series and I haven't made any decisions yet, okay. so I cool. can't endorse anyone. When did you move in here? About a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, and it used to be uh, rented by a commercial music uh, company and now I'm here. <laughs> nice, so, nice. And it's really great to have this brick and um, you know, we spent, what I did when I moved in, the first thing I did was, was really acoustically treat the room. None of this acoustic treatment was here. And mm -hmm. it's really important to me that, you know, what I hear, you know, we've, we've acoustically treated the room so that when I'm sitting here, it's exactly what I'm going to be hearing at the dub stage when I'm, you know, when I'm done writing. It's, I always try to make it a goal to, uh, to understand what happens at a, at a film dub so that by the time I get there, I'm not surprised, you know? Mm -hmm. So we've acoustically treated the room to kind of, uh, to mimic the sound of a, of a dub stage. Okay, perfect, amazing. And you say it's your studio at home, so oh. how does that work? So you've got a few studios. It's really cool. So maybe, should I show you the machine room? Should we walk around here or how do you wanna? Uh, yes, I think so, yeah. Let's, yeah. Have, a, let's have a quick yeah, look and you can maybe explain a little bit. Great. The, the workflow and... Absolutely, Let, I'll show you the machine room here where cool. I try to be somewhat uh, minimal, although things are never minimal. <laughs> you know, the rig you see in there is actually this Mac Pro. And it's just, um, what you were seeing in the room is just one machine and I write in Pro Tools and all, all my samples are hosted in here on some RAID drives, on, on right. some SSDs that are RAID together. But what we do overnight is uh, via a secure server, we actually um, synchronize our project drives, which are here, so that if I am working here today, I could be at home tomorrow, work from my house, and I have the same exact setup, same plugin, okay. same version of everything, and same session files. So it's, it's pretty darn cool. Um, this is the rig in the room over there. Um, and it's in a travel case. Um, this has been all over town. We've been to mix stages with it. And there's actually another rig that's usually right here, but okay. that's at Sony right now at the dub stage. Um, right, okay. Um, and one recent addition is here. You can see these uh, custom Hackintoshes that were built for us um, oh, that wow. run Vienna Ensemble. Oh, I um, see. Okay. So we're just okay. getting into it. It's very new to me. Yeah. Um, but we're using it to off offload some of the uh, work that these guys do. So they're not okay. doing as much work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the room. This is actually the box that does the tuning for my speakers. It's, a, it's made by Meyer up in the Bay Area. Uh, they make incredible stuff. And, uh, and then we have all our backups down here. <laughs> making wow. sure, okay. trying to avoid disaster. Backups every day. Every, every night. Can you explain a little more when you say the tuning of the speakers? Oh, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, what my acoustician does is he will um, place a, a very sensitive microphone in the same position that I sit in, and he will uh, run audio tests through each speaker, like white noise, and find any points in the room that might be either lacking or overemphasized okay. um, in the EQ frequency spectrum. Right. He could explain this a lot better than <laughs> I can. Um, but uh, what the first order of business is uh, passive acoustics. So he's trying to put the speakers and the, the sound paneling in the best position possible. That's passive okay. acoustic uh, treatment. Right. And then this is the active acoustic treatment. So once we've done our best to get the speakers in the best position and the, the paneling in the best position, if there are still inconsistencies in the room, this is where these EQs come in and these are really high. To make the correction. Exactly, yeah. that's the correction in there. So we do very little correction um, as, and that's the goal. You don't want to be overcorrecting. Yeah. It's just very little 
um, tweaks sort of and the goal is routines. to have like a flat kind of response yeah and it, you know not perfectly flat because we're trying to mimic the dub stage and the x curve and whatnot but but yes more okay. or less. all right let's take you around through here we have a little little tracking room slash another writing room yeah right next to my main room so there are a couple things about this room this is right, kind of cool. uh, <laughs> this is where usually there's another writing rig right here as our spare okay you know we could print cues from here um, but it's also a tracking room um, all the rooms are connected via xlr ethernet um, this is a this is something one of my assistants has been working on it's a uh, if you could see, these are bop pads. These are very cool. They're just, they're MIDI drum pads. Okay. And our goal was to have one octave of them <laughs> and then be able to transpose them so right. that you could actually play, for instance, you could play a piano by, you know, and, and okay. it's, inter it's interesting, you know, I'm always trying to find ways to break out of my fingers. I'm a pianist and, you know, I think it's, it's wonderful that I have a musical training, a musical background, but it's also a struggle because when I sit down at the piano, my hands go to very familiar places. And muscle for me. memory, you do exactly the same thing. muscle memory. Yeah. And this, as well as that MIDI interface I showed you, these are interesting ways that we're trying to break out of that a bit. Where you know, Brilliant. I'm gonna, I'm not a drummer. Like mm -hmm. I'm probably not even holding these correctly. But you know, by by playing, by making this into a keyboard, it forces me to do something different. Do you do some live stuff as well in, in this studio? Like maybe oh, yeah. doing things, oh, doing yeah. ensembles we, or? Um, you know, we don't really do ensembles in here. I have a room at my house where we could do uh, quartets. Okay. But, I, you know, we have so many wonderful tracking rooms in LA, so I try to, you know, keep them as busy as I can. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I can, you know, it's, it, you know, I'm also in London a lot, as you know, but, uh, but yeah, we, you know, that's where I go for bigger stuff is I'll go to the tracking room. Okay. You know, but but in my space we've recorded vocals, guitars, all sorts of soloists, small ensembles. Right. So yeah, cool. in this room you can see the acoustic treatment's a bit different. We've gone yeah. for a little bit more deadening in here. Okay. You know, we have one more room to show you here. You know what's cool about our setup? This this rig is the exact uh, is yet another exact clone of my rig. Okay. So if I'm f finishing up a cue and say I need more percussion on it, I might throw it over to Jason and say, hey, Jason, help me produce this, help me finish this. Or we might even, I might even say, hey, Jason, get a percussion groove going just so I could have something to work with right. in the other room as, you know. And you can just fire the crazy. sessions between each yeah. other and then it just opens we up. We could either, any... every night they synchronize together, but we could also run a synchronization anytime we want. If, you know, we say, okay. hey guys, let's synchronize these drives and now all the yeah. data is populated. Yeah. Great. And yeah. Then we've got loads of uh, lovely gear yeah, for, you the, know, for the gear heads. I, I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I love analog synths and this is only like probably not even a fifth of what I have. A lot of it's at my house or in storage. There's more over there. This is actually, it's funny. I, um, it, uh, I This is actually from the Daft Punk World Tour. Um, they left it with me. They had four of these in their pyramid. And I asked if they wanted this back and they never responded to my email. So, <laughs> oh, no. so it's mine for, for at least for you. a little while. <laughs> we used it on, on Tron, of course, as well. But you know what? It's funny because I use these, I seem to use these less and less for two reasons. One, the plugins get, are getting better and better. And a lot of our music is very dense. So unless it's um, something more soloistic and featured, you know, the plugins sound really great. Yeah. You're not, you might not notice as much a difference. And then also um, recallability, you know, it's, it's really simple. Like we have to adapt to picture, adapt to picture changes, conforms, uh, director might want things to be faster, slower, higher, lower. And, you know, it's really hard to do that with these guys. Um, oftentimes I'll record them um, at a higher sample rate um, just to have them at a higher quality so that when I am working, I could transpose them or stretch them out okay. um, uh, and not have as many artifacts, if right. that makes sense. Okay, but again, sure. I, I'm, mainly, I'm mainly in the virtual world these days, but these are fun to use nonetheless. They're, they're all hooked up if you want to. They're all hooked up. They're all going through this mixer. You know, I have a subbing mixer. Yeah, subbing yeah. mixer. Here's the MIDI, and you know, I think it's really funny when, um, you know, when composers show off all their synthesizers. It's it's really hard to, I don't know, it's hard to use all these things in in the in how fast things move. But uh, but we try. We try. Yeah. <laughs> we got try one sometimes. favorite. If you had to take one, it's there. actually in my main room. Okay, um, let's have a look in a bit. Yeah, then. yeah, yes, I'll show yeah. you in there. So and then hidden behind this wall over here. It's it's actually pretty cool. We have these uh, sliding panels, so we could really. We'll say goodbye to Jason. Bye, Jason. Bye, Jason. Um, we have these sliding panels that we could kind of. Um, this room is acoustically treated as well, yeah. so we've tuned this room, if, especially if we close these panels. But behind 
this panel. We have uh, some more of my team, Clark and Max are here editing some samples on our IMAX. Nice. And then if we go through the door right here, we're back sure. into we're back into our main our main area here. Um, this is actually one of my favorite instruments. This is the first piano I ever bought in LA, um, wow. which meant a lot to me. Um, and so when you, felt, when you came over from New York? Well, or? when I came over from New York, I was too broke to buy a piano. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's even more meaningful to me that you know I was able to save up some money and buy this. I really wanted to buy a different one, um, a, a cheaper one. I was going to buy this cheaper one and uh, Christina Ritchie bought it before I could get it. The piano dealer told me, oh, he yeah, said, oh, okay. while you were out, Christina Ritchie came in and bought it. <laughs> so he was super nice and discounted this piano to be the same price as the cheaper piano because he knew oh, I was wow. a musician. Um, and so that meant a lot to me. So I've, and it actually is a much better instrument. And we have felt here, which is, you know, kind of an awesome sound, you know. You know, have that nice, I don't know, just such Beautiful. a lovely tone for, for film scoring. So, so we actually recorded this quite a bit. You had it here. built in or? This it actually, the, the, it was there. Oh, I was there before, okay. Yeah, it was there. Um, and this came here when uh, I have at my house now, Steinway Grand with MIDI. And maybe you guys can okay. come there one day to see that. What's great about yeah. having MIDI, it's a hundred year old piano, but it has MIDI in it. So, you know, you play a phrase in the studio and you point it at the Steinway and all of a sudden the Steinway is playing it. Uh, and, and vice versa, you could play something in the Steinway and, and all of a sudden the synths are playing, you know? Yeah. So it's pretty yeah. slick. Pretty cool. We should Do you still use it here and there? Or? Oh yeah. Yeah, this, this we record use this it all here? the time. Yeah, in this just, room? Yeah, yeah, we just put up mics here. Cool. Yeah, it sounds pretty darn good in yeah. here, you know? Um, recording, high ceilings, wood. You know, it's recording nice. is all about moving, moving air molecules, you know, and yeah. that, it's really that simple. And, you know, one thing, you know, one thing I haven't tried in this room, but one thing I like doing, for instance, at air, is I love putting mics way far away, you okay. know, and, and letting the sound dissipate throughout the room. And, you know, that's, I, you've now given me that idea. I need to do that here. I need to record piano by putting a mic all the way up there and playing a very sure. quiet note here. Um, so if we go back to the main room, I'll show you. This is, this is my Desert Island synth right here. Um, this is a Pro One, and I've actually custom Customized it with a you know with a rosewood uh, enclosure here. Kind of this is the LFO, so you can see the LFO frequency. Oh, that's nice. not that's a that's a modification we had to have okay. made. Um, so yeah, it's, this it's got to look nice as well in the end, right? A lot of music uh, is psychology, right? You know, if it looked super beat up, you might not think to use it as much. But since yeah. it looks really beautiful, yeah. you're attracted to it. You know, you're, you, you want to yeah. walk over to it and play it. So. What about this? This, this, uh, this, is a, this is something I'm, I'm just playing with. In fact, it's so funny. I can't even turn it on without turning on. There's a UK uh, power supply down here. I just got it off of uh, Craigslist maybe a few months ago. I haven't had enough time to play with it, but it is this wacky synthesizer with this kind of very odd pitch bend ribbon. Uh, down okay. here and Ooh, um, yeah it's it is strange <laughs> right so so yeah. i it's it, it it's a very unusual synth which is why yeah. i got it so i'm going to see what kind of noise i can does make it work? out of it it does yeah. work okay. i've tested oh yeah don't worry i've tested it's not just decoration no it is not cool. just decoration so you mentioned the two studios can you explain a little bit what kind of work you do in which studio absolutely so there's a studio at my house which is awesome to have a studio at your place so if you want to just wear your pajamas and work, you can. Um, but also it's just, yeah, it's just nice to have uh, a place where maybe a little bit more relaxed in this environment. I don't have my assistants watching me all day. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, you, you also, I live very far from Santa Monica. I live near Hollywood, okay. you know? So I've, what I've kind of noticed over the years is I've, I would keep on coming to having to come to Santa Monica to work because so many cutting rooms were over here. Um, so when it came time to expand my studio and have some more space, I decided to come to Santa Monica for that space. And this is where my employees are and this is where I do all my meetings. That's very convenient to a number of studios, but I have my house in Los Feliz. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it, sometimes with LA commutes, that could be an hour, okay. an hour, 15 okay. minute commute. So. That's yet another reason why sometimes I don't leave my house. You know, I'm right. saying, hey, I don't need to have any meetings today. I'm going to just stay at my house and work. So, but you do, you said you have lots of effects and all your kind of oh, toys yeah. there. Is that kind of where you feel most creative? Or? I think so, just because, you know, I have my Moog modular there, I have my guitar pedals there, and I love yeah. using guitar pedals 
specifically because I'm not a guitarist. So I could like pick up a guitar, play one note, and it just becomes something else. Um, and I also will take a synthesizer, play a few notes, and it will kind of go through tons of effects yeah. and become something else. Yeah. And you've probably noticed that in my music when you hear like a weird sound, you know, it's, it, I'm, I'm very rarely using a stock sound with nothing on it. You know, usually it's something that maybe based on a stock sound in Zebra or Diva or Contact or wherever, yeah. you know, but then I've always processed it to try to make it my own. Should we have a quick uh, closer look uh, to your workstation? Yeah. And uh, maybe you can elaborate a little on your workflow as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. You know, maybe I'll, I'll open up a queue from Robin Hood, which we're just finishing oh, up right now. Cool. You know, and like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a weirdo. I write in Pro Tools, which is fairly unusual. <laughs> what are you using as, as your uh, MIDI keyboard? MIDI so keyboards? I'm actually about to upgrade these to the newest version, the code. 61 this is the older axiom 61 and i've stayed on this for so long because it's so flat on the desk it has these faders here which i love being able to ride the faders okay. you know i've tried all sorts of desk solutions i know a lot of composers love building keyboards into their desks and i just find that's too uh that's just too ridiculous for me mm -hmm. i i love the simplicity of this type of setup i have my x keys here so i could quantize and change the grid in pro tools very quickly and they could also stand up, uh, uh, which is kind of nice. cool, you know? And so I think that's something that a lot of custom composer desks, wow, you know, cool. don't really have. No, um, I don't think so. So, really you, cool. you know, and it's not that I love standing, but it's that, you know, if you're working long hours, which we normally do, as, as you all know, um, it's nice to be able to change your positioning so yeah. you're not just getting, you know, yeah. you're hurting your back or something. I think I mentioned earlier about this MIDI interface that is still very much in a beta mode, but I can, you know, I without even touching any any keys over here, I could transpose within this app, and you could see a visual representation here of the yeah. app, and I have a velocity gate, um, you know, st stuff oh, that right. you know that I was wishing I could have before, um, you know, is now there. You know, I wish every keyboard had those functions, yeah, but yeah. they just don't. <laughs> cool. So this, do you like the hammer action? You like as a like Euro, Europeanist? Uh, so. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, here's the thing. I have two really nice 88 note um, keyboards that I can um, use that I keep in storage. So if I'm using like a, a if I'm doing a piano driven score, I will pull one of those out of storage yeah. so yeah. I can have the full weighted 88 note okay. key. But you know, I don't want to fool people into thinking I'm sitting here playing virtuoso <laughs> piano keyboard that's just not not yeah, how it works yeah. usually i'm playing you know a simple chord um, chordal melody or i'm playing just a, a, a cello line or a viola line so i'm and i'm using and this is basically how i'm doing it and sure, let's yeah. see if i have any down here do no. you usually work uh, with templates you know i've spent many years doing this now and you know templating is obviously a key part of you know being productive mm. at the same time i find templating to also be anti-creative you know in the sense that you know what if i want to take these strings and put them through a delay line you know whereas yeah. if you have a template that's feeding directly into a mixer or something you're not going to be able to do that so i try to i for years for the last few years i had a very basic template that i would uh, then um import uh tracks into as i needed them so for yeah. instance i might have a piano a string patch some percussion and some basic brass or something. But if I needed a certain type of spiccato string, I'd have to import a track in. Um, and that was cool in one way because I could, every track was basically one for one, so I can manipulate and mix those tracks yeah. however I wanted to. I wasn't, I wasn't limited by, well, this is the way the audio flows to the template and okay. I can't change it. Now I'm doing a little bit of both where I have, you know, I've. I have my core palette, my core orchestra loaded, um, but each each family of instruments is coming in on a different aux channel, so I can still manipulate them. Um, and then all my virtual instruments are hosted internally, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my percussion is hosted internally. So um, what you might call the more production elements, the more produced elements, are internal to the system yeah. on single tracks, so I can really produce them and mix them in a certain way. And then the really basic orchestra tracks are being hosted on my new Hackintoshes. Um, Vienna. And using Vienna. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, still, still very much a work in progress, um, figuring out how to fit Vienna into the workflow. I think yes. you know, if you ask me to do 
this Robin Hood film all over again. I might change the way the template's laid out, but mm -hmm. you know, we only had uh, about two months from uh, spotting to scoring, so wow. we kind of just kind of plowed through. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I'm really proud of really proud of the film. Really proud of the music. And you're uh, happy with the with your outcome with the outcome of the absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're mixing right now, and you know, and you recorded in London, right? We at did. Air Studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really fun, and you maybe know, you can talk a bit that, uh, about the setup there. Absolutely. In fact, really I mean, maybe maybe after I show you through the session, yes. I'll kind of draw the setup for you. Okay, we cool. Did a, we did do a very unique setup. So you could see here. In my session, you know, for instance, here are, I'll just kind of zoom in on the percussion. And what's great about working in Pro Tools is, you know, these, this was percussion I recorded at, um, at a studio before I wrote the cue. So I'm, I had these ideas for a certain type of percussion groove at a certain tempo. And, you know, here are all the microphones and whatnot. And so, so I could actually bring in the recorded audio into my session and yeah. mix it in a certain way. And here's like, here are the, so those were obviously a lot of taiko rims and whatnot. And here are drum kits. Wow, so that's awesome. Um, and so that's all living, living within my session. Oh, there's some, there's some effects. And what's down here, we've actually simplified this session quite a bit. There are a lot of hidden tracks, but this is the orchestra down here. Okay. So it's, you know, um, so we have uh, a mix of Spitfire, Symphobia, you know, for instance, here's my Symphobia Brass. And that comes in on a return, and so I have it EQ'd how I like, and I have a certain reverb on it that I like using. Mm -hmm. um, and then same with the strings, you know. Um, I'm able to process it in a certain way, how I like to process it and, and replicate that later in the, during the mix process. So, um, you know, rather than, rather than being at the, at, uh, you know, boxed in by a certain way of templating, I've tried to make the template work for me and the yeah. sound I have. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm still, I'm still figuring it out. None of this is, yeah. is perfect at all. And when you, when you write, do you, are you, do you play it in or do you program it in? Oh, I do play it in. And and that's but that's where having this type of interface is cool. Like sometimes I might want to um, for instance, like that's this one sounds. might have might I don't know. Like this might be velocity sensitive. It's like controlling a filter. And I might say, you know what, I want to control the filter with the mod wheel, not the velocity. So I can just put in using the velocity gate, put in a constant velocity. So now every note, and you know, that's handy for strings. So for instance, I love playing, you know, I do love playing my, I love playing my spiccato strings, but you know, if I don't have a velocity gate on it, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to get the phrasing you want unless you're some virtuoso pianist, especially if there's a bit of latency like there is in my system. Yeah. So I'm going to have a velocity aid so that every every note I play is going to be, be the same velocity okay. when I play it in. So so it's, it's interesting. Yes, I do play a lot in, but I'm also trying to be conscious of how that's going in so I don't have to over edit if that yeah, makes any sure, sense, sure. you know. And then um, you dive into the MIDI, into the kind of piano roll and tweak. Oh and, yeah, you know, yeah. always, always diving into the piano roll to tweak stuff, you know, and you'll see here actually, you know, like I, I use, you know, the piano roll to create, to make sure I have the groove accents properly and then yeah. using the expression to do volume rides here, you know, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and then up here are my uh, my virtual instruments and effects. I've I've turned. I love using the new Pro Tools commit feature, so I could basically find a sound I like and know that it's not going to change. Like there's this cool um, church bell in the film that I made. It's a little quiet right now. And that was a combination of about eight different church bells. Yeah. Um, but now it's just living on one track, you know. And okay. same with this piano, you know. You know, it has wow. a certain type Epic. of sound and yeah. reverb that I've now committed to this one audio track. You know, so now I'm freeing up system resources yeah. for me to do other cool stuff like, um, you know, like that cool synth. And that, let's see, what is that? That's just a zebra. 
But you wow, can see that cool. sometimes, you know, this is a little overcooked for me. I try to be, when I see that many plugins on something, I know I'm, I'm wondering, I'm questioning, am I doing something wrong? But <laughs> I know for this sound, this was something that, this was a sound I had in my head that I was trying to get for a while. So I've basically kind of done stuff like, you know, taking a reverb, sent that into this really cool uh, compressor here. I've used this kind of colorizing distortion <coughs> plugged in plugin. I love using the, this EQ um, from from UAD. I've yet another EQ to kind of uh, work on work with the filtering here, yeah. and then I've then put another reverb after that. And finally, I've sent it through a limiter. I'm using that limiter and some cues where I really want to toughen it up. I might take that sound and really try to push it, push it yeah. really hard. Um, another plugin I love here on this guy is the radiator. Um, you know. Kind of boring without that, yeah, and also quiet. <laughs> but you know, I'm using really this to cool. make it more aggressive. And I have a little bit of reverb on that. Wow, that's I'm also cool using sound. the EQ to tame some stuff. So, um, so yeah, that, it, it, this actually this cue is actually pretty darn simple. You know, this these are the only two synths. Once you combine pretty it with amazing. a live percussion, it gets yeah. pretty tough. This is not your, this is not your your everyday Robin Hood. Wow! <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Really amazing. Um, and you you layer live recordings with a uh, with samples. Uh, uh, yes and no. You know, so obviously everything you heard just now is staying in the recording, but you're generally not going to hear me mixing the orchestra in the fake orchestra in okay. with the real orchestra. Right. The goal for me is to. Um, realize the sound I, I want with the real orchestra yeah. because you know you're just going to get so much more humanity and and I, I've mm -hmm. noticed that oftentimes by mixing the fake orchestra in you're pulling out some of the humanity okay. um, from it you know so so I my my goal is that these orchestral sounds down here get me through the demo phase mm -hmm. and then I mute them and they go away never to be heard again okay. to replace <laughs> replaced with beautiful 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 orchestra. Yeah.